Ooh, there we go. Hey everybody, we wanted to share a little topic that we were thinking about called the COVID cool down. So contrary to everything you're seeing online, <laughs> we're gonna talk about how fun we're having the first kind of official weekend in quarantine. So we know a lot of you are probably struggling being stuck at home with family and kids and this just general feeling of being cooped up. You know, it's really not hard to, it's really hard to have honest conversation and look people in the eye without some sort of escape, right? Like I can leave the house and go do something. Or maybe you're just jonesing for your favorite restaurant because uh, you're a foodie, <laughs> kind of like us. Um, but we want to give you some encouragement as to um, how our family is coping and dealing with things. So regardless, you might be feeling some sort of tension, like kids climbing on blinds up there. <laughs> so <laughs> we're not, we're certainly not perfect and not even close, um, but we've seen some comments and posts again on Facebook about this, this kind of craziness that's happening in people's families. And we want to uh, speak truth to what's been working for us, because as strange as it sounds, we're actually enjoying the slowdown and really found a lot of rest and peace in it. So Abraham Lincoln once said, a house divided against itself will not stand. So that statement was very turmoil in a time in the United States when there was slavery. Um, but I think that speaks right to the heart of probably what we're dealing with at home. So if your house is divided, it's just not going to stand. You're, you may be seeing the fruits of that or maybe not the fruits of that. That's good. So really, me and my wife, Abby, and our kids started talking about um, what does it take to be united? McCray, come here, buddy. <laughs> so we believe it's really based on a foundation of unity prayer and belief we're not trying to um you know this this enjoying enjoying this time wasn't an accident it came through a lot of work from pre-marriage to before kids to every day with our spouse and kids so we want to speak a little bit of truth in that so you may be thinking to yourself great but what what about me you know, I'm kind of struggling through this. So <laughs> foundations are not cheap or easy, right? We stand on our house foundation right now. The first thing you have to do is yes, you, you have to excavate, right? You have to get out all that old soil and that old dirt, your old beliefs, assumptions, and everything that really tear your family apart. You've got to work at eroding all that, getting all that out, get the excavator in and, and pull that out. Next, <laughs> next, you have to be in, uh, you have to bring in some good material. Right? So in order to put concrete down, you've got to have good material, nice solid base. And we believe that solid base is studied and growing together in truth. And we look to the oldest book in the world, the Bible. Um, so third, you're going to want to lay the concrete. So the rock of ages, the truth that has stood the test of time. That in Matthew it says, it says a fool builds his house on sand, but a, uh, a wise man builds his house on the rock. So really take the time to figure out, you know, where your house is built on. So as a husband and a father, I look to Colossians 3.19. It says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Might be tempted to argue, to complain, but husbands, love your wives. And it goes further in Ephesians 5.25. It says, husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The is hips! <laughs> To make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of the water of the word, and to present her as to self as a radiant church, without wrinkle or any blemish, holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. So, love your wife as the church, and love your love your wife as your own body. Tell me so, about that. <laughs> and then next, when you think about being a husband. Um, you also have to think about being a father and says, fathers, do not anger your children for they will be discouraged. So those are probably big tempters when you're locked up in a house with your family. Mm -hmm. you so what we're really looking at is um, how to get along as a family when you're being all together in the same house and um, how to be uni unified. So the reason why we're looking at our roles as who we are in the house home <laughs> is because that's how God created us to be and and that's how the family union works the best so my role is a wife and um and the bible is very clear and ro roles of wives and um a lot of people maybe some people feel like it's 
not freedom in reading these verses and, and hearing submit to your husband, but it actually is freedom because it is who God created us to be. So in Colossians 3.18 it says, Wives, submit to your husbands as it's fitting to the Lord. And in Ephesians 5.22 it says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, and just like Christ is the head of the church, his, his body of which he is the Savior. Now the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. And it really is a work of trusting God that he created you as a woman, if you're a woman, and um, he created you to be a wife. Um, and, and that means you have the wife role. And and wife role and husband role works really well together um, if you are living in your role that God has created you to live in. And um, it's also freeing because it is who you are created to be. And so um, you're able to really thrive in that. So it takes trust and it takes prayer that um, trusting God that he, he didn't create you on accident. He created you on purpose. And trust that, um, you know, your husband is going to also do what they're supposed to do as far as being a husband role, loving you. And if your husband does that role, it makes it really easy. But sometimes it's hard when your husband doesn't do that role. But you, that doesn't mean you're not called to still be the wife role and pray and have trust that God will bring your husband around. Mm -hmm. So being a, submitting to your husband, what does that look like? It looks like being the supportive role. Yeah. You're, you make sacrifices maybe in what you, your idea that's, that's of no, no. life should be or your idea of your day should be. Yeah. You make a sacrifice if your husband has a different plan, you sacrifice and usually it turns out good. <laughs> It really does. I mean, you know, every time that I've been like, I don't know about this, but I still take a step of faith and trust and, and give up what I, my fears or whatever it may be, and just trusted and went with his plan, it really was good. I have lots of examples, but I'm not going to give them all today. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think about it in perspective, you know, husbands are called to lay down our, our life for a wife, just like Christ did the church. And wives are just asked to submit, right? So if you think about the role comparison, like... It's freedom submission. to a wife. Yeah, It's freedom absolutely. to a wife and trusting. It's trusting and freedom because yeah. then it's not all on you. <laughs> and also, you trust your husband. And, and when you work together, instead of working against each other, you guys go so much further. Yep, yep. So husbands, lay down your life for your wife and she'll follow you anywhere in the world. So that's really the goal. So just don't. <laughs> Husbands need to take up that that cross and uh, and follow follow the Lord. So Brady, you want to read yours? What do kids are supposed to do in this situation? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee and. Thou mayest live long on the earth. You hear that, boys? Yeah. <laughs> so that just simply means kids listen to mom and dad, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we're bossing around. You know, our kids are jumping all over the place. It's no, it's cool. No, like we're having no. fun, and um, we're we're uh, they they our boys are realizing. Remember what happens when you don't listen to mom and dad? Bad things happen. Bad things happen because it's a promise. It's absolutely a promise. So, what are some, uh, you know, practical applications, right? So, when you're at home, do projects on the house together. Uh, cook together. You know, get in the kitchen. Get dirty with your, with your spouse. Um, play together. Video games, board games. Uh, the other night, we went outside and just played tag. Put flashlights on her head and ran around. Um, play hide and go seek. We can go bike riding. Go to the park, you know, to some degree. <laughs> uh, we like to play poker, so we even play poker sometimes. Uh, but talk together. Be honest. I think one of the biggest struggles is that we um, actually have time to talk to each other and we don't know what to say, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say break the ice by playing together first and starting to break the ice down so that people want to talk, talk to each other. Um, right before this, we did church online. You can find a lot of online churches. You can share, you, well, share in the comments our church and our service that we did. 
Um, so you can do online church. You can um, one thing we really like is the U Version Bible app, and there's Bible reading plans on there. Uh, we were just at Kirk Cameron's um, living room reset. Living room reset. They've actually got like you know how to architect your your family and uh, spend good family time. It's called living room reset. Call your parents and your friends and have good conversations. I think so. overall, just do it together. Do stuff together. Like right now, Matt's on an Irish super diet, and I'm trying to do it together with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good. That means no coffee, and that's hard. <laughs> yeah. But. But most important, I, I think if you're feeling disunity in your family at this time, is because you just you need to forgive each other. You need to forgive each other, and ask for forgiveness. So in Colossians three eighteen, it says. Put on, therefore, the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, you should also forgive. So just think about how Christ has forgiven us. Just work on doing that. I think if you start working on doing that, a lot of times we don't want to talk to each other because we've got some baggage in our past that we have to bring up. Um, be ready to forgive, not to judge. So, I think the first signs of, of this disunity is grumbling and arguing. So pray for each other. And and have open minds. You're not going to have the answers. When me and Abby pray together, it's like, we're just, we're just going to God together. We're not like trying to pray to correct each other's issues. We're just, we're just talking and asking, you know, what God has for us next. Abby asked me this morning, like, what, what do you think the future holds? Like, we've got no idea. Really, we don't. But we still have peace, joy, and love in the midst of having no idea. Because if you think about perspective, um, and every day is a gift, and every breath is a gift, then you're just living with that gift today. And knowing that God's going to take care of everything that's next. So we hope this is helpful, and we want to hear from you. So what's your COVID cool down? What does that look like for you guys? Um, we'd love to hear how you guys spend your time together, what creative ideas you guys are doing. So we love you. Grace and peace. And peace out, boys. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out.